In the OpenAI Dev Day, Sam Altman mentioned a few of the updates to ChatGPT. The most exciting one that we are going to share with you today was the updates to custom GPTs. These are GPTs that you can create yourself. We're going to teach you exactly how to do that in this tutorial. You don't even need to be a coder in order to make your own GPTs. And in times to come, you don't even need to know how to code to make apps. This is groundbreaking stuff. And we're going to teach you exactly how to do this step by step. So a GPT, for those of you that don't know, is a generative pre-trained transformer. And what it basically does is it fulfills a function. If you tell it to do something, it is able to do that. Now, previously, when it came to generating uh, content or anything through ChatGPT, you had to give it a whole lot of information and you had to prompt it again and again and again. Basically, what custom GPTs allow you to do is to train your GPT on all the information that you wanted to so that it can create exactly the type of content that you want over and over and over again without retraining it. Now, just a reminder, you do need a pro account to access these features. First thing you're going to do is you're going to sign in and you're going to go to this explore function. It's going to bring you over to this page over here where you have a whole lot of custom GPTs that were made by OpenAI. They allow you to do a whole lot of things like negotiate, uh, learn about a game, or the rules about a specific game. There's a whole lot to choose from. And I'm going to show you a quick tutorial on, let's pick one that's the sous chef over here. So this one is designed to help create meals for you. So I'm gonna use it over here and I'm going to say, hey, I need to create some Mexican food, but I don't have a lot of time and I don't have a lot of money. What can you create for me? So it goes right to work and it says, first of all, do you have any allergies? Do you have preferred ingredients? It gives me a whole lot of parameters that I can apply. And I'm going to play around with something here saying I'm allergic to something like avocado. And what it does then is it gives me an entire recipe. But more than that, it gives me more than just a recipe. It gives me the instructions and it also gives me a grocery list of things that I will need and the exact quantities. So that's the, the power of these custom GPTs that you can start building for yourself. So we're going to apply this. We're going to create our own custom GPT from scratch. And ours is going to fulfill a specific purpose around becoming a Google expert, right? If you don't see create a GPT in, in bold, if it's blurred, you need to go down to your settings and you need to go to beta features and make sure that your beta features are activated. Once you've done that, you go to create a GPT. It's going to pop up with this window over here. That's pretty much as easy as this thing is, right? So it's going to ask me what I want and I'm going to ask it to become a Google expert. So for Google products like Google Workspace, I want it to be an expert at Google products. ChatGPT Builder immediately goes to work. The first thing it's going to help you do is decide on a name. So it's called Google Guide. I'm not quite happy with Google Guide. I'd prefer something like Google with expert. And immediately it says, okay, great. It'll be called Google Expert. Now let's design a logo, a profile photo for you. So it goes to work designing a profile. I'm not quite happy with the first one. So I ask it to create something with a G that's prominent. And look at what it created there. Wow, that is so cool. I really like that. Uh, so I'm happy with that. Now that I'm happy with it, it's going to ask me for more details specifics around what I want it to do. Okay. So first thing it's going to ask me is, do I want it to, to write from the perspective of an expert or not? I want this to be accessible from beginners to intermediate to experts and lead them to further their skill set. So I, I put this in. And then it gives me a suggestion around, would you like it to give some fun facts? I said, you know what? I like that. I want it to actually be funny with a great sense of comedic timing. So I don't want it to be overly funny, but I wanted to make the whole situation lighthearted. So I ask it to do just that. And it can mention, you know, interesting stories and facts about Google's history. That could be pretty cool. The builder goes back to work. 
and now it's asked me for anything else that I might want to add. It's really as simple as this. And now I can roll this thing out, but I do need to test it. And if you want to do some fine tuning, this is where you go to the configure button over here. You'll notice that it's incorporated all the information that I've put in as instructions, which is pretty cool. Now, one thing I want to do is I want to go back and just make sure that there's certain things to avoid. Now, if you want to be very specific about something that you want your custom GPT to avoid, you want to say that in your creation tab here, you must, and I'm going to say, look, I want you to stick to tabs. Don't make uh, assumptions or anything along those lines. But as soon as I go back to my configure settings, look at that. It's added that to my, to my configuration settings now, which is fantastic. Then you're going to notice that it has these conversation starters. So if anyone uses this GPT, and they want to know how to get started. These are the four questions that'll pop up and help them to get started. I don't like the one over here about maps, so I would prefer to have something like learn about Google's app integrations because maybe we can create a workflow from it. That's ideally what I wanted to do. Then I'm going to give it capabilities to actually have web browsing, dial image generation and code interpretation. And then there's one final thing I need to do. Now, I need to give it knowledge. The great thing about these GPTs is you can actually give them a whole lot of knowledge that you've accumulated, okay? So what I want to do is I want to go online and I want to find the latest Google updates. Remember, ChatGPT's cutoff knowledge was uh, somewhere in 2022. So we want something that's going to be more up to date that's out there. So I'm going to look for the latest news and I found a couple of sites that I quite like. So I'm going to check out what they've got. So I copy the content. I'm going to paste it into a Word document. And then very importantly, I'm going to save it as a PDF and I'm going to call it Google Update 1. Okay, I've saved it as a PDF. Now I'm going to do the same thing for a few others. In fact, I'm going to visit the Google site and I'm going to look for their personal updates. Then I'm going to head back to my custom GPT. The great thing about it is if you do step out, it does save the draft so you won't have anything lost. I'm going to head back to my integrations and then I'm going to go to knowledge and I'm going to upload all my files. Okay, then very importantly, I'm going to, I'm going to give it some special instructions. And the one being, I want you to use the updates, especially update three in giving your uh, knowledge to people. There's a few more settings to take into consideration. The first one is the additional settings, which if you click, keep it ticked, will allow you to help train up ChatGPT with your own information. And then there's the add actions button. Now, this is where you can actually turn ChatGPT into an agent, something that does the work for you. This will require a bit more attention and maybe a tutorial all on its own. This is where you can link up your Zapier account so that it can actually perform actions for you. And in this case, seeing as though it's a Google expert, if we had to integrate Zapier, we could do a whole lot of things with the Google suite, which is pretty amazing. It will require more attention, so we're not going to go into that right away, but it's definitely on the cards. And this is where things are going to get really interesting in the near future. I have three options to save it. I can save it only for me, only with people with only people with a link or public. Now the public function is going to be something that they're going to roll out pretty soon where you can actually promote your apps that you've created. You can promote your GPTs that you've configured yourself, okay? So if you would like to do that, there's something that you're going to need to do. You're gonna to have to head over to your settings tab 
and you'll see at the bottom here it has the final tab is build profile okay it's going to show up with your name and then it's going to ask you to add a website okay so if you have a domain you can add it in and that way you can actually drive people to your website which is fantastic for the sake of our tutorial all we're going to do is save it as a privately only for me and then let's give this thing a test and see how it does so i'm going to ask it to i'd like to learn how to combine and link up a workflow using ai from my google form to my gmail etc so let's see what it creates that is pretty impressive okay so it definitely knows what it's talking about i mean look at that go to google form number two link google form to google sheets and then it goes into detail with utilizing Sheets AI features, which I didn't even know about. Uh, we can do automated email responses through through Gmail and linking up through Zapier. So it's, it's actually going to show us. It gives us a sample code that we can use. We can set triggers. Wow, look at that. Send emails. So, so it's actually gone ahead and generated something that is pretty useful. Look, I'd need to test it out to see how useful it is. But the great thing about it is we can go back to our GPT and we can customize it. If it didn't work, if something went wrong, we can change it and we can make it better and better and improve and iterate on it so that it's even more useful to people. Guys, this is an absolute game changer going forward. So if you don't have a GPT Pro account, this might be the time to get it. Any other links that you might need in this process will be in the description below. And as always, if you've enjoyed this, remember to like and subscribe for more content just like this.